a good morning or afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jan Reichert, Chief Operating Officer of the Antibody Society. Today's webinar is one in a series designed to inform and educate our members and the broader scientific community about topics relating to antibody discovery and development. Our expert speaker, Dr. Zev Wisatsky, will discuss how the Signals Research Suite advances multimodal drug development. Please note the webinar is being recorded. Please do add any and all questions to the Q&A box in the viewer, and those questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. Without further ado, I'll now turn the show over to our speaker. Wonderful. I appreciate the introduction, Janice, and the Antibody Society audience for your attention today. Uh, I'm Zeb Wisotsky. I'm a product marketing manager at Revity Signals, and I'm excited to share my presentation with you all. Before I begin, though, I just wanted to call out two assumptions that we are making with this presentation. So one, that we all have a basic understanding of antibody drug discovery and the need for digital tools to support this process is very important. I would almost say paramount to the drug, to drug discovery success. So just a quick background, at Revity Signals, our mission is innovating for a healthier world. You know, we're really working to fulfill that mission by providing science-based software solutions that leverage big tech innovations to help improve lives everywhere. So really the, what, what, what we say to people in other words is we make scientific software that help our customers to make drugs that save lives. Okay, <clears throat> so here is a slide of what we'll learn today. I won't read this from the slide, but I'm excited to introduce you to Revity Signals. Um, our, again, our organization is uh, focused on delivering drug discovery and development software to help accelerate your science. Before we get to the main part of the presentation, I just wanted to introduce uh, our Signals Research Suite. We use a make, test, decide paradigm, and you'll see that in our presentation today, to support our researchers. So making using Signals Notebook, the premier cloud-based electronic lab notebook that facilitates the creation and communication of molecules of interest via hierarchical editing language for macromolecules, you'll see that, Helm, uh, and, and powered ChemDraw as well. Um, test, we'll use Signals Research Suite data processing for data anal uh, analysis and visualization. Curve fitting, bioassays, and standardizing your results for consistent results um, powered by Spotfire. And then finally, uh, the Signals Research Suite data-driven analytics, which enable a, uh, enabling multi-assay, multi-study comparison powered by Spotfire and the ability to find the best candidate in wh whichever uh, space you're in to move toward accelerating this decision-making. So specifically today, researchers will gain a better, better visibility into antibody drug conjugates or just antibody um, uh, therapeutics, candidate profiling, and can quickly determine, for example, structure activity or structure proper, property relationships uh, across modalities to select the optimal, in this case, conjugation sites and parents. Okay, so today's, just to, just to put into context, today's drug hunters working in drug discovery and development have a tough job. Uh, you know, they're looking for cures within a space that's getting increasingly more complex, uh, running the gamut of traditional small molecules, which you can see on the left here, all the way to larger drug modalities up to cells, and we'll talk about uh, antibodies today. Um, just to look at the market conditions of sales and the top selling drugs for at least 2022 was around a 40-60 split between small molecules and larger, more complicated biologics. And while the potential for patient health is quite vast, the company uh, uh, facing drug hunters is increasingly over the spectrum for small to larger, so more complicated biologics. In other words, new, mod new drug modalities are harder to represent, they're harder to make, they're harder to deliver uh, to biopharmaceutical research organizations. And then adding these modalities together, um, I use the term like Franken molecules. So for example, an oligonucleotide conjugated to a peptide, or in our case today, we'll talk about antibody drug conjugates, <clears throat> um, it increases the need for these tools to be more sophisticated, enough to support effective communication and increasing the speed and accuracy of developing these candidate drugs. So meeting the challenge of greater complexity means the next generation of informatics platforms has to cover this full spectrum. 
and at Brevity Signals, we're keenly aware of this complexity for new drug modality research um, and have developed what we believe is the next generation discovery informatics platform to address these growing challenges of new drug modality research. Okay, so again, to make software powerful, it needs to communicate and represent science with the end goals in mind. For example, if you're working on small molecules, as a chemist, you'd require chemical structures and other tools to showcase how structures are made. As you get larger, working uh, with a scientist, um, potentially on oligonucleotides, you need consistent and easy ways to represent or build these, uh, such as Helm or other sequence-focused tools. And as you get to the protein level, um, you know, a scientist could need things like AlphaFold or other 3D structural tools. Although today we're focusing on antibody drug conjugates, it's challenging to find software tools to connect and support the needs across these modalities. So for those who are unfamiliar, antibody drug conjugates are generally made up of three different components. Antibodies, which must be generated and bind to targets of interest. Uh, linkers, which can be chemical or peptide-based. And the small molecule warhead or the drug acting on the target. And as I mentioned, um, this really to note that we're already starting with potentially three or three plus ways of representing individuals' work within many softwares. And this puts communication and information as a key requirement, which can be challenging to accomplish. So furthermore, um, I'll introduce you to our cast of characters today. By the way, everything you're seeing here is a, is a faux uh, uh, biopharma, so this doesn't exist, but it's helpful to walk us through, um, and we work with many companies um, in this particular situation. So Hopper Biopharma is our, um, is our company today, and uh, working on antibody drug conjugates also introduces scientific specialties in which potentially three or more separate subject matter expert groups will need to work together making these final candidates for testing. So here's our team. So we have Alice in the top left, um, who's working on antibody drug uh, discovery team. Uh, Alex and Stacy's team uh, will be on the assays. So one will be doing like primary and secondary screening. And then there are decisions that are made to either advance or re-immunize, we'll see in a second. Paul is in the protein um, engineering team and Charles is from the small molecule team. So again, I'm saying this a couple of times because I think it is easy to say software will solve everything, but we have to really think about, you know, the people involved and who are doing this. It's a challenge to work seamlessly together. We're using various different tools, potentially disparate, not connected, not easily searchable. We have three plus data work streams and data sets being produced in some cases simultaneously. Some are highly dependent with no and go no decisions for gating various different aspects of the organization. And the ability for these groups, for yourselves, for people who are studying and, and working in this space, to be efficient, um, to have to fail quickly or to succeed quickly with candidates is a key metric for drug discovery. So let's review the ADC research flow, and then um, I'll show you how this looks and it is accomplished today in the Signals Research Suite. Okay, so. Um, we will first start with the immunization, um, harvesting, harvesting of cells. We will then generate the hybridoma cell lines for testing in primary high throughput screens. In this example, maybe like an ELISA um, or others. Excuse me. Then we'll send for a secondary screening. Um, we'll be using surface plasmid resonance assays, but there are other binding assays that one can do. And then from here, we'll go to our first go or no go decision where uh, we'll you know, make a decision on whether to start an, another immunization or, or um, press on. Assuming that uh, these candidates are meet the criteria that we're looking for, candidate antibodies will um, be selected for further optimization and expression uh, binding humanization for antibody drug conjugation. And then these antibodies are purified and we'll need to combine the payload and the linker to generate the ADC which will then be tested extensively and finally to uh, the ADC candidate nomination. So typically this is much more complex as you can kind of see here. So we've worked with companies and this is an example. This process can take months uh, up to years uh, and you know, it's, it's more complicated than the previous slide uh, that I represented. Uh, but to make our, our yeah, uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll just mention that um, you know, we work with many companies in this space. So uh, to make our, our presentation a little bit more interactive, we will now post our first of three poll questions. Um, I'll give the next you know, 30 to 45 seconds to participate.
So I think everybody should be hopefully seeing a poll. And then uh, Janice, I'm not sure if you're on the line still to give us a time check. Yeah, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, excellent. It still says mute on my end for some reason, but uh, <laughs> we I think we're getting there. And they have all the yeah. answers in. Yes. Oop, nope. One more coming in. So we have yes coming in at 38%, no at 31%, and not sure at 31%. So basically a fairly even spurt here. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the question was, you know, how do you feel your current software supports antibody drug discovery today? And um, this is this is quite typical. We see kind of between a 25% uh, to 30, as you saw here, or 30, 32% um, of customers saying, yeah, you know, we feel like it, it fits what we need. And then about, you know, two thirds to more, sometimes 75% in the I don't know, or, or for sure, no, it does not support. And uh, that's definitely, so we appreciate your uh, uh, participation. And, um, you know, one of our goals uh, is to really support that and, and, and hear that voice and try to continue to um, make our software is better. So appreciate that. We'll move on. Okay, so here's our outline. We already talked about the background. Um, we'll first, you know, discuss the discovery of antibodies of interest, you know, the engineering team creating linkers and payloads of interest, conjugating and tracking binding and linker development via Helm. We'll integrate and you'll see uh, combining the three major components for testing uh, for cell killing assays and other assays. And then finally ending with the full team to decide which antibodies are we going to promote. But um, instead of kind of starting from the beginning, I like to actually start from the end first to show you where we're going. So you guys are uh, you know, very well aware of our, of our, of our end goal. So um, what we are looking at here is a part of our product. This is um, an example of a signals data dashboard powered by Spotfire. And each of these columns is various data that we want to compare over many different candidates that are tested. Uh, so for example, we have small molecule payloads. You can see on the left, we have linkers or antibody binding sites and assay data all associated. But what we really want to look at is the dashboard that looks like this. Again, this is another dashboard powered by our data analytics. And this dashboard is all of the data that was assembled over various months for each, con each constituent of um, an antibody drug conjugate, as well as the you know, 80, uh, antibody drug conjugate data. And overall, if we focus on the green um, sort of bar or bounds, this represents the range in which you know, we can compare candidates over many assays, many parameters to be deemed effective or safe or good, or that fall within sort of what we, what we care about as far as our you know, antibodies that we're, we're, we're generating. So uh, this allows us to compare you know, various metrics and assay data, which you know candidates, which candidates to move forward and why. And this is the end goal, right? This is what we want. So it's for our drug pipeline. So I can show you an easy way to compare this, whether you're a scientist or a VP of research or director or whatnot. Um, I show you this because now I'll share the destination. I share the destination um, where our presentation will take us today. Okay. All right. So we're now in product. It first begins with Alice. She is the antibody scientist who is going to go to the vivarium. She'll stimulate, stimulate immunogenicity in the animals. And Alice uses Signal's notebook, right? That's where we're at, to prepare the animal experiments, recording protocols, including all of the objectives and the steps that go into um, you know, this. One of the great strengths, of course, is that it provides you an environment in which all of the inputs like media, um, animals, proteins can all be tracked and identified and linked together in a single experimental record. And it also provides a place where you can begin recording observations. So in this particular case, um, we want to look at titer of the antibodies. And this is integrated with Spotfire directly. So those observations can be directly linked and loaded, which we'll see in a second, into Spotfire and visualized, as well as example plate layouts and samples that are being used. So this is all now part of a single experiment that is uh, supporting all of the workflows that, you know, for Alice, that she would need to generate this. Um, for the animals. Okay, so the benefit or value for Alice is because Alice is you know, responsible for multiple experiments, potentially in parallel, excuse me, she has, uh, you know, she needs a single environment in which that she can, you know, hold, house all of those, each of those studies and can more easily be tracked. All of the data for them and it's all organized. 
Additionally, communication and the ability to share this data uh, and materials is also very paramount as her hybridoma cell lines will be needed for testing in the next stages. Okay. So moving on um, next, Alex, the assay scientist, will take these clones that have been selected and run them through a battery of acids. Assay, excuse me. <clears throat> Again, Signals Notebook will assemble the media materials equipment and protocols that will be used for his high throughput plate screen for primer activity. And so we will bring all of these um, results into Signals Notebook. You saw that in drag and drop, but this could also be done programmatically. And then Alex will use Signals Research Suite data processing experiment. Again, uh, this integrated version of Spotfire to support the high end-to-end -end process. And because all of the um, data is integrated for Alex, he can track and centralize the data processing. So he's doing a high throughput ELISA. The raw data comes in from the Signals Notebook all the experimental properties, plate maps you can see here, and experimental details are being brought in. And then he will go to uh, the high throughput, Q, or high throughput sequence or QAQC app, which we'll see very shortly, and um, you know facilitate the normalized view of all of the controls, the plate layouts, and the results will be normalized. So that's what we're looking at here. And finally, um, this will be put into a hit selection, a uh, little bit more, oh, sorry, still normalization results. So next we'll go to the hit selection um, where, you know, put a little more simply is where four colonies will appear um, for the hit criteria of interest and can be directly selected and sent back to the experiment or shared with a team for next steps of processing, queuing and any uh, updating uh, of tasks, which is what we're seeing here. So we, we can now do that, the, the downstream work. And here's the cloning task. Okay. So the value for Alex is the ability to capture, you know, mass amounts of data seamlessly as he has to screen thousands of these colonies and having to process whereby he, he can drag and drop results in, although I mentioned the majority of that might be pushed in through via APIs, uh, have the experimental record, keep track of everything and has automatic workflow that guides him through <clears throat> a step-by-step -step process um, and, and task requesting for secondary screening. Okay, so in our next scene, next the team will run a binding affinity assay such as the SPR experiment. So Stacy is an assay scientist who will take these antibodies and do SPR assays. We have the capabilities within our platform to run SPR processing from raw results to final data sets across different instruments. Um, and in this example, she's bringing in the raw data from a BioCore instrument and then walking through the other signals research suite data processing workflow. So the raw data is viewed here and it goes into the normal steps performed in SPR uh, including zeroing, where we can select the part of SPR curve and everything will be baselined again against. Um, we'll be doing, I think, cropping, which is showing next, where we can take the full SPR flow cell and focus on the subsets of space that actually have the data of interest. Um, then we'll do, be doing referencing so that each of the flow cells can be correctly referenced to its reference flow cell for intra flow cell data visualization and then normalized um, or blank subtracted to normalize uh, correctly on an empty flow cell data to get the final results, which is, I think, coming here, blank subtracting, yeah. So finally, the data is put into a kinetic modeling, a one-to-one -one mass transfer calculation, and we'll be doing a curve fit uh, to be able to model the data and extract the right parameters. So modifying you know, the way the curve interpretation is being done and finally getting the kinetic curve here we're able to look at the KA and KDs, um, which each of these values or results is useful for the team. And at this point, we can do a QAQC um, for knocking out various different points of um, that are outside the bounds of interest. And then, of course, she can publish this data. That's what we're doing here via the publishing app, which directly um, pushes this into the data repository later, layer, excuse me, um, <clears throat> to be integrated with other results and then assess for which of these antibodies um, will be chosen to move forward, which is what we're doing here. Um, so I know that's a lot, but really, you know, for Stacy, the benefit is that this is an integrated platform and it allows for standardization and normalization of her data to be managed. Uh, as some of you know who work in, in this space, uh, you know, there are various different um, SPR instruments, right? Uh, each one has its own different user interface and different user experience. But when you use signal, uh, signals, she and her team 
have a common experience platform to support that secondary um, analysis, supporting data normalization, as I mentioned, um, workload, et cetera. So regardless of where the data is coming from, <clears throat> once that you know, protocol or, or workflow is generated, um, her team only has to learn you know, really a single interface for that secondary analysis. And she has the confidence that it's being processed the same way, regardless of which user this is. Right, moving on. So having generated the hybrid domas and generating antibodies, the team is now ready to decide which of these antibodies are most efficacious given the requirements. So um, we're looking at an antibody dashboard here <clears throat> to do so. And here you can access the global search where antibodies can be selected. Here we can see uh, the individual's results for CDR regions in each antibody in just a moment. So that and uh, so instead of like a, a SAR table in for small molecules, we're using a sequence, um, you know, S SAR uh, analysis. A lead body, a lead antibody, can be pinned and compared to the remaining antibodies to look for patterns um, of you know mutational differences between lead ABs and other uh, antibodies. Uh, that are being addressed. And we'll, at this particular example, we're looking at hex cell titer to select the lead you know, antibody of interest. It's easy to compare uh, for the sequence differences here. But easier would be to use the multiple sequence alignment. Um, so moving to the multiple sequence alignment app, the scientists can pin the reference antibodies to compare, um, driving at the comparison where you can see the distribution of results. And again, you pin uh, a single reference and you can look at the various CDRs within that are in red and compare uh, which mutations from lead antibodies, looking again at HEC titer and other assay results. So you can see that being um, moved here. But even better would be to have a system return you in unbiased fashion where the best antibody by CDR region um, and within the antibody component uh, um, analysis, the user can really select uh, those shown and uh, for improvement and of assay of interest, in this case, binding or, or HEC, HEC cell titer and select the reference to see uh, the sequence patterns that are really driving these results of interest. So the you know, best uh, antibodies are then selected at this point. They're sent back to the signals environment for um, nomination moving forward with the ADC assembly. And this group uh, list uh, <clears throat> is available from here inside signals analysis object where antibody results can be reviewed with the team and, and how they decide to progress with the next steps of the overall project, which you're seeing here. Okay, so really, again, what is the value here? Identifying the antibody substitutions, correlating these <clears throat> to binding and titer results, and picking the best antibody efficiencies to move forward. We can identify um, which antibodies to advance, this, and Signals Research Suite helps surface these results by integrating over you know, various data sets, providing antibody relevant tools uh, to make the process easy and as transparent as possible. All right. So we're gonna take a quick break here. Uh, here is our second of the three poll questions. Let's give another uh, 30 to 45 seconds to participate from our audience. And maybe we can, uh, we can read the question as well. Yep, so the question here is, you are generating scientific findings and we would like to know how many teams receive your scientific findings? Is it one team that you communicate with? Three, two, four, more than four? And answers coming in are favoring two, favoring two at 53%. Yep. Smaller numbers are for one and four plus at perfect. at 13%, about 20% at three. Yeah, perfect. I'll, I'll comment on that. I mean, I think that that's definitely in line with what we see as well. Generally, you're working with more than more than one team, we'll say. And I think the like goal with this is really to, you know, identify with the challenge of communication as you in, increase the number of teams that you have to interact with. Um, and, and multiply that by the number of softwares y'all use, uh, email, et cetera, and, and meetings. Um, it's a huge challenge. And so we really want to think about that as we you know, generate software to make it more useful and um, a, a, what I'll call a joyful experience, um, which is hard to say <laughs> with software. So appreciate that participation again. All right, we'll move on to a couple more scenes. 
Um, and then our final poll question and then open it up for questions. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on here. Okay. So having identified the leads, um, next we wanna optimize expression or maybe humanization. So Paul is the protein engineer who will take the antibody sequence and put them into expression vectors, uh, which we have capabilities within the signals notebooks you can see here. Very importantly, Paul is able to do this, his cloning directly here. We have integrated tools um, like SnapGene, but uh, so this is very easy for a molecular biologist like Paul. But in this particular example, we're looking at the molecular biology toolkit within signals um, uh, capability. So um, he can plan primers, he can develop a whole cloning experiment. Um, so this is just again, a, more sequencing here. <clears throat> and here we can plan primers, develop a whole cloning experiment and, and allow Paul to easily create expression vectors for production. Uh, so within the signals notebook <clears throat> page, you'll have the ability to track all of the constituents like the original plasmid primers, insert sequence and so forth. Um, and, and all the way to the PCR gel to verify that it's correct um, within, the, within the notebook to show the correct plasmid has been created. And then he can use now the worksheets within Signal's notebook to track the production experiment, including steps that have been completed, timestamp when they've been completed, which really helps and guides um, Paul through the, through the process uh, of cloning, through expression, through purification. So for Paul, the benefit that Signal's um, provides is really to make you know, easy for the molecular biologist to sit down, plan out the experiment, and the capabilities like worksheets to track progress, uh, driving experiments for consistent, reproducible, and, and, and in a reliable fashion. We don't have time today, unfortunately, to go into the small molecule development, although I think this group may be the wrong group for that anyway. But we do have another presentation I just wanted to mention that, that this is showcased. So if you're interested, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I can share that with you. Okay, so Moving on to Charles, he is responsible for the linker. The linker for this particular organization is their special sauce and the diff what differentiates them from other uh, antibody drug conjugate companies. Uh, so Charles needs to have an easy way and a consistent way to draw these polypeptides or small molecules or inter intermediate sized molecules. And to do that, he'll need to create new synthesis experiments, which you've seen here. And as I mentioned, this is a huge uh, differentiator for them. So with integrated into signals is the Helm monomer editor, which you can see here. And it allows to support natural and customer curated monomers to be assembled in polymer chains of interest, natural and unnatural, Pistoia Alliance or custom libraries of interest. This is the best in class uh, capability to make it easy um, uh, as possible to diagram and create quickly these novel polymers um, where you can you know, uh, select them and see what changes you have. And um, you can simply point and click and Charles is able to build this out <clears throat> in this polymer sequence with these linkers um, quickly. So you'll notice briefly I'm hovering over things or you, you saw some hovering over things. You'll get to, to see the sequence showing up and an actual structure showing up, um, but also the chemical modifications that are added. So oftentimes you don't have a specialty like chemistry at the end and, and the linkers need, you know, uh, need to be able to have it bound to the analyte and, and the payload. Okay. Oops. So the uh, the value for Charles is really about being able to correctly represent the linker in a way that's consistent across the teams, you know, from conjugation chemists uh, and across his organization, right? Because if he's working with many teams, as we've talked about, they may need to see it in their own uh, uh, you know sequence uh, or, or amino acid way, whereas he wants to see the chemical uh, representation. And this supports this and provides the capability to draw and manage and standardize the complexity of these monomers required to represent these modalities. Okay, so finally the team will get together to do the final assembly <clears throat> within signals. They can also draw the antibody, or in this case, a segment of the antibody of, that's of interest. Um, as I mentioned, the linker chemistries, as well as the linker to the payload. So to get an accurate representation of the final ADC that will go into testing. The team will then assemble this, the three main components, um, ADC, antibody linker payload, and this capability uh, really brings it all together to keep all the components and the lineage and the data results connected um, is, is a very powerful and unique capability um, within Revity to do the final assembly without losing any context. And I'll just mention quickly here, the key benefit for them is the full traceability. You know, being able to um, you know, have all these individual components, all the individual results associated with them and connect that to the final assembly that spans um, from small molecule to antibody to ADC, full ADC. 
And again, that's a unique capability that we support. Okay, so this brings us back to the beginning where I showed you the end dashboards. Here, not only do we have the antibody data, we have the small molecule linker and all the sets are connected related to the ADC candidate. We have various dashboards of interest, a search where we can you know, perform, select various aspects of interest and deep dive into this data. So once the search is performed, we can observe an, a dashboard that looks like um, the one I showed you in the beginning where all the data is connected. So the, the uh, green is, uh, well, once we get there, hold on. You can do it video. Oh, maybe not. How interesting. Oh, there it goes, okay. Interesting, uh, pause for a second. Uh, so the green will be the final antibody drug conjugate uh, information or test results. The blue is the linker results for all the things like antibody load efficiency. The tan are the results related to the antibody itself. And the pink is related to the small molecule payload, which we'll, we'll show you in just a second. And you know, think for a moment that you know what we're doing. This is being pulled, all those results are being pulled together uh, you know, really disparate constituents and, and all final, all part of a final single construct that are being assembled into a single dashboard that will, again, as I open it every time, will be refreshed with the correct data. So we can um, hover over this, pin a reference sequence, and, you know, see how these CDRs change between uh, to get a snapshot view. Comparing payload versus ADC, looking at correlation analysis between the original payload test results um, is, you know, very nice. But I think the end goal really is to get to this final dashboard, which we'll show in just a moment. I previously showed you this highly multivariate multivariate space where you really want to see a tool that has the multi-parameter optimization. And um, you know this is considered a good result within the green, as I mentioned, for each of these axes. And it's intended to make it easy for a scientist to select ADCs and see how these ADCs are performing across you know, all of these different um, assays, uh, you know, various areas and, and parameters. And, you know, in this case, we can quickly and clearly see that ADC 4162 is, is the winner. And that's, you know, where we would want to move that forward, taking this very complicated multi-parameter optimization space and providing a visual reference space that makes it easy for data-driven decisions faster. So let's take a quick breather. Whew. Uh, using signals, this ADC process can be driven rapidly and thoroughly, as I showed, end to end. And it's all happening within the signals research suite, SaaS-based market leading capabilities. So we continue to grow and improve uh, and to add what signals already offers today to make it as easy as possible for customers who are working in the antibody space to benefit from them. So this will end our in-presentation or, or demonstration part uh, and I will uh, post the last poll question and we'll give the next 30 to 45 seconds to participate from, from you all. Last poll question is, what percentage of your experiments are outsourced? And the bars are moving. And the bar, oh, bars are still moving. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of outsourcing going on. All right. I believe we have stabilized. And the okay. final answer is in for percentages at the low end, 0 to 20%. That is 43% of the okay. total from this group. <clears throat> In the 21 to 50 percent of experiments outsourced, that is the answer selected by 36 percent of this group. 21 percent selected 51 to 80 percent. Wow. Very nice. Okay. Nobody is above 80 percent of this group. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so depending on the audience, obviously that will strongly influence the the outsourcing percentages, but it. It's important to note, again, we've taken you from like various different softwares that you might be using, various different internal groups that you might be using, and now let's add on a, another wrinkle where you have to outsource. Um, so 
we're really thinking about it from end to end, um, trying to provide you know a seamless experience for people. And um, obviously, there are also what do, what, what do I want to say um, economic uh, influences to that. But um, trying to make that that process as seamless as possible, so that your data is secured and um, it's generally a seamless experience between you know sharing data, uh, usually primary data sets, raw data sets between you know a CRO or an academic collaborator, etc. So appreciate the, the um, participation there. All right, so I will move into the Q and A. Um, I don't know if we want to switch that on the to to our should work and then I can see all the questions one second all right mine just hung so I'm gonna one moment guys here we go and then we will get to our Q a session Right, so looks like I've I've lost our hosts, but um, I'll, I I can see at least the first question. Um, the first question I'm I'm looking at is, you know, what if I outsource chemistry work? You know, will what you show me, you know, with your assistance for ADCs still work? And the short answer is yes. Um, so, you know, first, just quick background: we uh, provide one of the premier tools uh, for chemistry, ChemDraw. Um, and there is a very uh, near term uh, functionality that we are going to come up with, which is uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some other webinars um, that we can share with you guys. But basically, uh, the big challenge is working with external partners is, is not simple. And um, we've created a product that will support that. So basically, think of like the signals suite or the signals notebook um, and being able to share, you know, like a chemical structure um, to a, a CRO and then have them generate it or, or something of that nature, if I understand the question correctly. Um, we, we have a tool that will support that this year, um, which is very, very exciting. Um, not to say that people aren't doing that today, people are, but it is less uh, seamless. It's a little more clunky, a lot of, you know, um, spreadsheets, a lot more meetings, a lot more emails back and forth. And we want to make that um, less touch points, more secure, you know, some of these compounds are, you know, high IP or, or, or really important. We don't want the getting out. So uh, to be able to do that in a secure fashion and then um, less burden on the individual scientist or the organization to in, uh, ingest that raw data sets. Um, so hopefully making it uh, simpler for, you know, a programmatic approach instead of I have to manually copy and paste this where lots of errors can happen. So that should address the first question, which was, you know, if I outsource with chemistry work, will this still, what you showed me today, will this still be able to support me? And the answer is, is that was a long answer and the short answer is yes. All right. Well, and thanks for cool. hopping in there. No worries. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I have the questions <laughs> to disappear. Yeah, no worries. Frozen, <laughs> frozen screen there. It didn't want to yeah. load. The second question then is, again, about conjugating things. So what about other conjugation pairs such as oligos uh, conjugated with peptides? Can SRS yeah. support these? Yes, so I didn't I didn't have a chance to talk about that and that may be a little bit less relevant for, for this team, but it is important to know that we are supporting those modalities. Um, sure. So we had a customer that was, that is their special sauce is doing, you know, uh, oligonucleotides and then conjugating them to peptides and then they want to use non-natural or unnatural uh, modifications. So yes, uh, short answer is yes. And the long answer is we have this great Helm capability where you can, you know, um, grab your custom libraries, um, bring those in. Another question someone asked was like, do I have to do it manually? The answer is no, you can do it uh, all in one. However, um, there are some situations too where we want to do, you know, on the fly, like I need to modify this. Um, you can also do that and then uh, uh, add that to your library um, kind of in a retrospective if that deems useful. So thank you for that question. And the next question, payloads used in ADCs will be able to function mostly in drug delivery mechanism. Apart from this, may I know other major functional mechanisms which advances large molecule applications. 
So, sorry, I'm just reading the question again to make sure I'm hearing where you want to go with this. Um, Could be taken yeah, a couple but, of ways. Yeah, I mean, so right now, I think, you know, specifically for the canonical ADC, uh, if I understand where you're wanting to go, is like it's a it's a, a honing in device, right? It, it's not really doing any of the um, the work or the 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 therapeutic uh, work, right? It's it's generally the um, linker and and the uh, payload or the small molecule in this particular example. Um, and so I think if the if I understand the question, it's it's delivery. Can we know other functional mechanisms? Yeah, uh, antibodies are used, you know, in various different therapeutic ways to block, uh, you know, binding um, to stop, you know, various uh, in general to, to that they are they are acting on the target and 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 they are the therapeutic target. Um, so there may be ways where you could kind of um, put put those type of antibodies um, as well as a, a payload together. Um, I know that um, some people are using Protax, which is very exciting um, in the space of chemistry and, and connecting them to antibodies and, and using those in, in, in novel ways. Um, and then Janice, maybe I'd love to hear from you um, being in this space as long as you have if you had anything to add. On, on that particular question, uh, no, I, I think I will leave that to you as the expert in this area. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to, happy to follow up. But uh, yeah, uh, I think the main goal is to, you know, make sure that from a software and a science perspective, we are allowing for those various different um, changes, modalities, and, and directions that the science wants to go, and we support that. So maybe I'll answer it that way, um, but lots of new science is happening every day and it's hard to keep up. I, I'm sure Janice can agree with that. That is absolutely true. It is a big challenge. I might have missed it, but when you were, so you were talking about the animal experiments, ah. um, if, if there's other, if there's in vivo work being done, that's being done in-house versus outsourcing, can the, yeah. can, is, does the system handle that also? Yeah, yeah. Short answer is yes. Um, I didn't, <clears throat> again, have a have a, a, a chance to go into the in vivo piece, um, but we definitely have a part of our product that that supports that um, and always is iterating to make that more easily easily done. Um, <clears throat> again, you touch on a piece of like outsourcing, you know, some people do the small molecule work in house and outsource the antibody work. Some people do the antibody work in house and do the small molecule outsource the small molecule work, which we've heard from our first question. Um, so we <clears throat> aim to kind of support all of these various different, you know, if your organization is like, we don't specialize in that, like we can't bring that in house, you, you can outsource, we have that support. Um, but if you do everything in house, we also have that, that uh, capabilities to either utilize our one software or, or connect in with other softwares that you guys use. Um, so yeah, great question. Okay, well, I'll give the audience another few seconds. If you have any additional questions, I would encourage you to put them in the Q&A box viewer. I'm talking really slowly to give you a chance here. <laughs> but I think we might have gotten, whoop, wait, wait, one more. Binding to some receptors leads to internalization, including FCRN as the receptor. Binding to some other receptors may not lead to internalization. Stoichiometry of binding to the receptors may also impact internalization. Can you predict internalization versus not? Oh, okay. So <clears throat> this is a very scientifically driven question. So the short answer is, is um, I would need to follow up uh, with a little more detail. But if I ask this question in the sense of how can your software support me in understanding this question, um, I don't know that answer. I would need to follow up. So, so what I mean by that is, is if we um, understand the science, do we have an app, right, that would allow you to sort of take in the raw data? Um, I'm assuming it would be either, you know, maybe like SPR or, or other binding assays, and actually um, take the raw data and then predict with an algorithm or something like that to actually answer that question for you, or at least elucidate that possibility. Um, so. I don't have that answer, but that's a really great question and, and I can definitely follow up. So really appreciate that. Okay, another 
couple of seconds for the final, final questions. I know there's some milling around in there, but if you think of them later, you can always contact Zev later. Yep. So please do feel free to, to contact him if you come up with uh, questions after the facts. So in concluding, I would like to thank Dr. Wysotsky for this very insightful presentation on how Signals Research Suite advances multimodal drug development. And I also thank you very much for joining the webinar today. An on-demand version will be available soon. I'll send a link to it by email to everyone who registered. Please feel free to watch this or any of our on-demand webinars when it's convenient. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.